Hi there, this is Tony from Pianotone.ca, and this is my review on the Z-Stand with the optional second tier from Liquid Stands. So when you're looking at different stands on Amazon or anywhere else online, you need to be aware that while a lot of these stands may look very similar, they are not all the same. A few months ago, I bought a Z-Stand from Amazon from another brand that at the time I thought looked pretty much the same as the Liquid Stands model I was considering, and I did a review on that stand. Later on, I was shopping for a new piano bench and had been uh, considering one from Liquid Stands for some time. It was more money than any of the other benches I'd ever tried, but since I'd never found a bench I was happy with, I decided to give the Liquid Stands model a try, and as I mentioned in my review on that bench, it's worth every penny. That bench that I'm sitting on right now is fantastic. There's a link to my review in the description below. So Liquid Stands actually noticed my review on their bench and reached out to me. And as we messaged uh, back and forth about their products, I was really curious, so I asked if their stand was the same as the other stand that I bought. And they said definitely not, and that they'd like to send me one of their Z stands in my favorite color, purple, as well as their second tier, so that I could test it out, do a review, good or bad, and possibly even compare it to my other stand. Well, given how well made the Liquid Stands bench is, I was pretty curious to take them up on their offer. So thanks a bunch to the good people at Liquid Stands for uh, sending in this stand to me. It's much appreciated. But I will be giving my complete honest opinion on their stand in this review. And FYI, that's exactly what Liquid Stands told me to do as well. They are super nice people to deal with, and they have a lot of pride in their products. So with all that out of the way, let's check out the uh, Liquid Stands uh, Z stand and the second tier. Okay, so the Liquid Stands uh, Z stand is available as a single tier, or you can get the second tier if you wish. And you can also order it with or without wheels. The main stand is currently available in black, as well as purple, chrome, and light blue. I actually do have the wheels, but I won't be putting them on because the stand's on my hardwood floor. Now, I did film the assembly of the stand, but not everybody wants to watch that, so I've included that at the end of this video, so you can check it out afterwards if you want to. What I will say about the assembly, though, is it was super simple to put together. Everything was really well packaged, and the stand and the separately packaged uh, second tier uh, both had uh, super clear, easy-to-follow instructions with color pictures and all the parts were clearly labeled, so it only took a few minutes to put together. And the assembly process was significantly easier and smoother than the other stand I bought. Okay, so the main stand actually comes in just three pieces and includes pouches of clearly labeled hardware. And once assembled, this stand really is a beast. It is so sturdy and strong, it's crazy, and it doesn't wobble in the slightest. It has a weight limit of a whopping 250 pounds, so that would be five of my heavy and bulky Yamaha DGX 670s that I could pile up on this stand. At my band practices, I'm using a decent quality double uh, X-Brace stand with my Yamaha CK88 piano, and it wobbles a ton when I play. When I'm practicing at home, my piano doesn't budge no matter how hard I'm playing. There are pads that you attach uh, to uh, pad and protect the bottom of your keyboard, and there are uh, really heavy-duty, super-thick straps that you can use if you want to to secure your keyboard even further, assuming it has the proper holes on the bottom of it. I don't bother with that because the stand is so sturdy anyways, and I'm constantly moving my keyboards around. It's super easy to quickly adjust the height and width uh, of the, uh, the stand with these spring knobs. You loosen them and then pull to make adjustments, and then the metal knob will pop into the next hole. When you reach it, then you tighten it back up. You can adjust both the height and the width of the stand from anything between 22 and, uh, and a half and 33 and a half inches. So you should be able to find the right height for uh, sitting or standing. And I have to mention, I was happy to see that the stand goes low enough to accommodate thicker keyboards like my Yamaha CK88, which is pretty thick at almost six inches. But I have the stand at the lowest slot and it's perfect. And if I needed to, I could actually lower it even further by uh, just not using the first slot and just letting the, uh, the arms slide down uh, all the way into the base. So I'm just going to adjust the uh, height of the stand to its maximum height so you can see how uh, high that goes. So that's perfect for a uh, standing playing height. So in comparing just the main Liquid Stand Z stand to my old stand, the old stand was totally okay and it was way better than any X-Bray stand I've ever tried. And I was pretty impressed with it, especially the main stand. But once I saw the Liquid Stand Z stand, it's just basically pretty much better in every single category. On the main stand, the bars themselves are all a little bit thicker, but most importantly, noticeably sturdier feeling. The knobs on the Liquid Stand uh, stands are all pull knobs, uh, where you uh, loosen and then pull to adjust and tighten. 
On my old stand, there was a peg that you pushed in to release the leg from a hole. Then you slid it up and down till it popped into the next hole. And then all that screwing in the knob on my old stand does is just press against the bar itself. So it's, as a result, it's nowhere near as stable. So if I brace the bottom of my old stand, make sure the arm is as tight as possible, and then try wiggling it, check out how much movement there is. Now compare that to doing the same thing on the liquid stands model, and I've even got the height set to the maximum height at the moment. It doesn't wiggle or move or shake at all. And on the cross brace on the main stand, the liquid stands version is not only thicker, but it has a pull knob and pinholes in the cross brace to secure it in place, where the uh, old ha uh, stand has no pinholes. You're just screwing the knob on that one just to press dire uh, directly against the bar. And one part of the old stand I actually found kind of frustrating was the headphone hook of all things. It would simply not stay in uh, tight. Uh, I could retighten it as many times as I wanted to, and within a day or two, it would be spinning in circles. The hook on the uh, liquid stands model is far better. It's nice and thick, doesn't move, and even has a nice plastic tip on it. And as I mentioned, given my hardwood floor, I'm not using the wheels, but uh, here's uh, an example of one of them. And it's just like the rest of the stand. This is looking really, really heavy duty, and it has a uh, what looks to be a super stiff and strong, well-built uh, locking mechanism on it. And I should also mention that if you're using the feet instead of the wheels, you can actually adjust those if you're not on a level surface. So the verdict on the main Z-Stand? Fantastic. So let's talk about the second tier. The second tier from Liquid Stands is, well, also fantastic. The second tier is not only super well built and sturdy like the main stand is, but it actually offers some uh, other very cool features. Most second tier stands that I've seen, including my old one, tend to have much narrower uh, bars and less heavy-duty uh, knobs and hardware than the main stand they're attached to, but this one uh, has bars that are uh, almost the same thickness and just as sturdy feeling as the bars on the main stand, and it uses the same uh, really sturdy feeling pull knobs. And the arms that hold the second-tier keyboard have much bigger and heavier-duty uh, plastic pieces to hold that uh, keyboard in place. The second tier attaches by popping out the back plastic cover on the main stand's side bars, and then when you insert the base and tighten uh, the bolt, then these two pieces that I'm about to show you will open up and grab on the inside. And once those are tightened, they are super solid and stable even before adding the cross brace. So given how uh, the upper tier attaches, you can actually use this upper tier with any other main keyboard stand that has one and a quarter inch uh, square tubing. So super cool. And the cross brace, which is also thick and sturdy, really makes the uh, second tier super stable. The weight limit on the second tier is 60 pounds, which is crazy. I could even put my 50 pound Yamaha DGX 670 up there although I'd need somebody to help me lift it up. For height adjustments, there are seven pinholes to choose from. So this can go from uh, 14 inches up to 22.5 inches. And the uh, upper arms also have really heavy duty gears where you can make tons of very minute adjustments to the angle that your upper keyboard is gonna rest at. But apart from the upper tier being super strong and stable, I mentioned there are a couple of really cool features and they both have to do with the cross brace bar. On most stands I've tried out, including my old one, the upper arms need to be set at the same width as the uh, main lower stand legs are at because the arms that hold your upper keyboard are just attached to the end of these telescoping bars. But what Liquid Stands did, which is super cool and super useful, is attach these arms to the cross brace instead. So you can actually slide these back and forth to wherever you want them. This is awesome because then you can have your upper and lower tiers each be set to whatever width works for you. I did a video a short while back with my old stand that had my Yamaha CK88 on the bottom and then a smaller 49 key MIDI keyboard on the top. And because both tiers had to be set to the same width, I had to set the lower tier holding my uh, heavy, heavier Yamaha to a much narrower width than I was really comfortable with in order to accommodate the smaller 49 key keyboard on the top. I had to be careful not to put too much pressure on the ends of uh, my piano or to bump it while it was set up like that. 
But with this stand, I can leave the bottom tier set at a nice stable wide width for my piano and then make the top tier as narrow as I want it to. Now, one other super cool benefit of this sturdy crossbar is it's a place where you can mount all sorts of other stuff to. I've got a uh, mic boom arm, an iPhone boom arm and clip, and an iPad uh, tablet mount that I can attach to this, and this is a really handy feature. I film tons of videos in this tiny room and it's always challenging for me to find a place to mount my mic boom and actually even more challenging to find a spot to mount my iPhone camera to get a nice overhead view of a keyboard menu for a video. This is going to offer me a great opportunity moving forward. So I've got the height right now to its lowest setting. I'm just going to adjust it to its highest setting so you can see how high it goes. So that's the highest setting there, so that's awesome. So comparing the upper tier to my old stand, there's really no comparison here. The one on my old stand was okay, and it did do the job, but it was definitely nowhere near as strong or as sturdy, and it actually only had uh, three height adjustments instead of seven, so it couldn't go anywhere near this high. And after owning it for a few months, the upper tier arms actually kind of moved out of line with each other. And that cross brace not only makes the liquid stands version way sturdier, it also offers the ability to mount stuff on it. So super happy to have an improved uh, stand to use. So the verdict on the liquid stands Z style keyboard stand and the optional second tier, these are both fantastic products. I can't recommend them highly enough. If you're looking for a single or a two tier stand, you should definitely check these out. So that's pretty much it for this video. I've left some affiliate links in the description below if you wanna check out current uh, prices for liquid stands products in your area. If you like the content, please feel free to smash the like button and subscribe to my channel. That does really help me out. So now if you're interested in the assembly, I have that video coming up next. So thanks again for stopping by and happy stand shopping. Have an awesome day. Okay, so this is how everything arrived. I've got the, uh, the stand itself. I've got the uh, second tier and there's actually a pack of wheels as well. I'm probably not going to use because that's uh, not going to be good on my hardwood. But uh, just wanted to uh, show how efficiently these things are packed. I was uh, actually kind of surprised at how small the boxes are. But uh, I'll get everything opened up and then I'll start putting it together. Okay, so I've got everything out of the box. It was uh, nicely bubble wrapped and protected, etc. And uh, all of the accessories uh, all are uh, nicely uh, labeled with their part numbers. And uh, we've got a really nice uh, full color uh, little instruction manual on how to assemble it uh, in the uh, correct order and uh, referencing all of the uh, part numbers that are labeled. And as you'll notice, uh, I did opt for the purple stand, one of my favorite colors, but it is available in black and I think a couple of other colors as well. So let's get started uh, putting it together. Okay, so step one is to screw uh, two feet into each base. So uh, these are the feet here, A1. Step two is to attach bases to the ends of the assembled cross beam using butterfly knobs and washers. So that's A3. And the instructions say to uh, screw the adjustable pull knobs uh, into here, but these are actually already uh, attached, so. That's for the height adjustment. So you can uh, pull to adjust the height and then tighten it once you've made your choice. I won't know what that is until I get this uh, into my uh, studio, but that's good for now. And next step is to attach the padded rests to the top surface of the uh, support legs. So that's these uh, guys here, A2. Just go front and back. And the next step is uh, to uh, install the uh, security straps. 
I don't tend to use these myself very often because I'm moving my uh, keyboards around so much that I'm always uh, putting the keyboard on the stand, off the stand, on, off, on the stand, off the stand, etc. But I'll install these anyways. And then if I did want to uh, use the uh, security straps, I could attach these to the, uh, to the uh, keyboard and then screw it in if the uh, keyboard supports it. And then it looks like the final step is going to be to uh, screw in the uh, headphone support. So there's the uh, stand in its uh, all its purple glory. Uh, very easy to put together, only took a couple of minutes, and uh, is uh, extremely uh, heavy duty and stable looking. I'm actually going to compare it to my pile stand in a minute, but first I think I'll, I'll uh, do the assembly of the second tier. But if you don't get the second tier, that's, uh, that's the stand that you're going to get. Before I attach the second tier, I'll also do just a couple of quick adjustments so we can check that out. Okay, so for height, height adjustments, wow. I can go right up to standing. This is really easy to tighten and then now it's nice and stable. And for left and right, that goes a huge distance. I'm actually going to quickly measure that, I'm curious. That's 35 and a half inches, that's, that's awesome. So that's going to be, uh, that's going to be super good. And that is crazy stable. Everything tightened up nice and easy and loving the stand so far. Let's attach the uh, second tier. Okay, so I've got all the parts for the uh, second tier uh, uh, removed from the package. And uh, once again, got a really nice set of uh, instructions. And once again, all the parts are nicely labeled. So this is, should be a breeze to put together. Also got some uh, bonus little stickers in the package. So, uh, so step one is to uh, assemble the, uh, the bases that are going to get inserted into the stand. So they include an Allen key, which is nice. What I'm assuming this is going to do is this is going to lift up as I screw that in so that it uh, secures it inside the uh, stand. And with the stand, what we do is going to move the camera here. So we pop off this back piece. Insert that, and then as we tighten the screw, that's going to uh, expand and secure it. So that's, that's in there nice and stable. Wow, is that ever stable? <laughs> that's really impressive. I'm just going to go to the other side.
And the next step is to uh, attach the uh, cross beam. And when you attach the cross beam, make sure you have this facing the back, because that's how you're going to uh, that's how you're going to uh, secure uh, th this distance once you uh, get it sorted out. So I've got that uh, facing the back. My other stand uh, that I bought before this doesn't have the cross beam between the two uh, second tier arms. So uh, this is gonna likely be quite a bit more stable. And that definitely is quite a bit more stable. Wow, that's awesome. And you attach the uh, last uh, knob to the back here. And we just attach the upper arms. On the cross beam. This is awesome because it's going to give you lots of versatility in uh, where you put your upper arms. So if you just have a little tiny keyboard, you can uh, put them nice and close together. Or if you uh, want to uh, install them on uh, you know, nice and wide for a larger keyboard, then you can do that as well. So you're not uh, limited to where these go on. And there's uh, pads on these, so you're not going to uh, scratch the crossbar. And then you tighten that. Now, another one of the advantages of this crossbar that I'm really liking is the fact that it's going to give you the opportunity to clamp other stuff to it. And that's really, really cool because uh, I might be able to clamp like a, like a mic to this or all sorts of other stuff, tablet holder. So I uh, have to check that out a bit later. Now this side is a little bit skinnier than this side. So they've also included a little adapter. So then that way that's going to make that height of this one the same as the height of this one so that these things line up properly. So there you have it. That's the stand assembled. Just actually gonna go grab my uh, existing stand so I can make some quick comparisons here. Okay, so I've got my uh, pile stand that I had done a review on before, and the pile stand's been fine. Um, there is definitely a pretty big difference in uh, the sturdiness and the quality though of the liquid stands model. Now, there's a lot of little things too. Uh, for example, uh, the headphone thing on this pile stand, no matter how many times I tighten that, it's just always loose. It does move, but it's fine and it's nice and sturdy. It's also got the nice little you know, plastic extra lip there. Uh, the stand is just, every everything about the stand, when you compare the two, is just a little bit better on the liquid stands model. And in particular, the second tier on the liquid stands model is absolutely fantastic. Like, it is so sturdy. A big part of that is the cross brace, because uh, this model doesn't have a cross brace. What I have been noticing with the pile stand as well, after having used it for a while, and I do put it through a lot of use, I'm constantly moving keyboards around, doing reviews and that kind of thing, is that the two upper uh, tier uh, pieces have just started to kind of move a little bit away from each other. So they don't line up perfectly. It's still totally usable and it's still a, it's still a good stand, but the, uh, the, the liquid stands one is just so much sturdier. This mechanism is a lot beefier than this one. All of the knobs are uh, easier to adjust and just feel uh, sturdier and more in place, that type of thing. And the fact that you can move these uh, upper arms back and forth along the cross brace is a huge feature. Uh, they're also uh, quite a bit uh, thicker around than these ones. And the uh, padding on these is uh, really beefy and the lip on the front is bigger. Just, I mean, every, everything about it is just a little bit better than the other one. And as I was mentioning, the added extra feature that you've got uh, with this cross brace is you can clamp whatever you want to the cross brace. You could clamp a, 
a mic uh, a mic holder or anything else that you uh, that you have to that. So I'm just going to put my uh, pianos on this and we'll uh, take a quick look at what it looks like. Okay, so there's the uh, stand with my uh, Yamaha CK88 fully weighted stage piano on the bottom. It's about 25, 26 pounds and I got an Alesis Recital 61 sitting on the top. That one's about 15 pounds or so and super, super stable. That does not move at all. That is fantastic. And the upper arm also super, super stable. Really, really impressed with this stand. So as I was mentioning before, uh, the uh, ability to clamp stuff to the uh, that cross brace on the uh, upper uh, tier is really cool. I just quickly grabbed my uh, mic boom and uh, just clamped that on to the upper tier. It's probably not in the, the perfect spot at the moment, but uh, that's fine. I can adjust that if I want to. And uh, you've got all of this space. You could be clamping uh, like an iPad uh, clamp or something to hold an iPad above your, uh, or a music holder or whatever, above your, uh, your upper tier keyboard. Uh, so super, super useful.